So in my hand, I'm holding a shoe that costs about the same price as a used car. And I'm not talking about some junky used car that you pick up on the side of the road. I'm talking about a decent used car from CarMax. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the Dior Air Jordan 1 Highs. So this shoe is special for a lot of different reasons. One of those reasons obviously is how much this shoe can fetch on the resale market. Like I said, this shoe costs about the same as a used car. Well, I mean, I guess maybe not so much right now because used cars are appreciating for the first time ever, which is kind of crazy, but most years, most times this shoe costs about the same as a Toyota Camry from 2015. And what's insane to me is someone who loves Air Jordan 1s and has tons of pairs in my collection, this shoe is really not that different. I mean, in the case of the Air Jordan 1 Dior's, while this shoe is made of more premium materials and overall is actually a well-made designer shoe, it's really just all about the hype. So the Air Jordan 1 Dior High and the Dior Low both released in July of 2020 for an insane retail price of $2,000. I mean, that's even high for designer sneaker retail prices. Most designer sneakers retail for between $800 to $1,500, but this shoe, presumably because it's a collaboration between Jordan brand and Dior, and also because this shoe uses higher quality materials, this sneaker retailed for double what most designer sneakers retail for. I mean, it's almost not even worth comparing the retail price of this shoe to a standard pair of Jordan 1s, which up until recently only retailed for $170. But what's even crazier about this shoe is that even though this sneaker retailed for so much money, $2,000, the resale price of this shoe is almost 10 grand. And I mean, I consider myself a sneaker connoisseur, maybe not a sneaker expert, but at least a sneaker connoisseur. And even then, I still don't totally get it. So in today's video, we're gonna take an up close and personal look at the Dior Air Jordan 1 Highs. Also take a look at the retail packaging and find out whether this shoe is actually worth the price of a car. But let's first start things off with the box. And this box is pretty different than really any other Jordan brand box. Right off the bat, you'll notice that this box is significantly larger than a standard Air Jordan 1 box. In fact, it looks about two times the size, but getting into the finish of this box, it's actually very premium feeling as you would hope to expect. So the box itself is made up of cardboard, but it seems to be wrapped in some sort of dark blue canvas material. Of course, on the top of the box, you've got the iconic Air Dior logo printed in white, which looks incredible. On one side of the box, you've got the size Tag. Now, obviously this size tag is different than most other Jordan 1 size tags because this shoe is only sold through Dior stores. This unfortunately is not a sneaker that you could have picked up on the sneakers app, much like the Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones that are dropping in the next couple weeks. This shoe is only available through the brand that they collaborated with. But where this box gets interesting is trying to figure out how to open it. So there are two different main sides of the box or long sides of the box. One of them you can lift up, it's got a magnet and it actually opens the box. The other one feels like you could open it, but if you try and pull it, it'll rip the box right open. Um, and I've almost done that a couple times at this point and I think the right side of the box to open is this side right here But uh, let's cross our fingers and hope this is it. It's not. It's not this one They've got these very strong magnets, so it makes it very difficult to open and that's why you might find yourself accidentally pulling on the wrong side It's scary, especially if you're uh, not wealthy enough to be able to buy these on the regular. So inside the box, you'll find a few different things. The first thing that you've got is your receipt, your Dior receipt, and this really nice Dior envelope right there. The next thing is actually a second set of insoles. So they've got this Dior pattern repeated across the top of these insoles. It's pressed into the leather. What I love about these insoles is that it's actually really high quality leather just pressed onto a foam insole. So it's actually a surprisingly high quality insole. And again, kind of hope that you get little things like this because you're buying the shoe for $2,000 retail. $8,000 in my case, because I bought these uh, with some money that I made from the $20 sneaker collection. If you have not seen that series, make sure to check it out. Basically what I did is I started out with 20 bucks and thrifted sneakers and cleaned them up and resold them and built my way up to a pair of $8,000 or really $9,000 sneakers. And so now I have them and I'm still afraid of them because they're so expensive. But <laughs> getting back into the box itself, the next thing we have is a dust bag. It looks like we've got two dust bags. So we've got one Air Dior Wings logo dust bag right there and then a second one for the other shoe. Now these dust bags kind of scare me a little bit because I've had sneakers with dust bags before that are light colors and dust bags like this that are dark colors can actually dye the leather. And I'm hoping that's not the case for these shoes because even though they use a white leather, this leather is probably nowhere near as absorbent as the crappy leather that they usually use on Jordan 1. So I'm hoping that these dust bags won't actually dye the shoes. They probably won't. It feels like they're a, a nice canvas that is not rubbing in any way, so that's good. Next up inside the box, we've got a little baggie, which I think has the metal Jumpman tag right here. 
Very, very nice. Now, unfortunately, this Jumpman tag, I thought that it was silver. It's not, it's just a regular metal. It does, however, say Dior on the back, very small, which is kind of cool. I did get one of these with my patent bread Air Jordan 1, so I'm not incredibly impressed, but it is still nice to have it, and it does come in this nice little Air Dior bag. And then the final thing inside the box, besides all the Dior branded paper, is actually your extra set of laces, which comes in a white color with these nice metal lace tips that say Dior on them. With my pair, and I think every retail pair, the shoe comes pre-laced with gray laces. I'm not gonna switch them out for white laces. I just don't feel like it needs it. But uh, you have the option if you decide to switch them out. And from what I can tell, other than these sort of foam bumpers on either side of the box right here that stop the shoe from like banging into the side of the box in transit, that's pretty much all you get. So let me throw all this stuff back in the box. Let's close the box and hopefully not open it again for a while because again, I'm so afraid that I'm just gonna rip this box wide open. But now let's get back into the sneakers themselves, the Dior Air Jordan 1 Highs. Now, like I said earlier, there were two different versions of the shoe that were made, the high top version, which we have right here, and the low top version. Both of these silhouettes were incredibly limited. They only made 8,500 pairs of the high top Air Jordan 1s and even less of the Air Jordan Lows. I think it was just 4,700 pairs. So that most likely is one of the main contributing factors as to why this shoe is so expensive now because it's so incredibly hard to find, especially in brand new condition. So while this shoe is a collaboration between the brand Dior and the brand Jumpman, it's mostly a shoe that was designed by Kim Jones, the creative director of Dior at the time. And while researching for this review, I actually learned a lot of really cool things about this collaboration and also a lot of reasons why Kim Jones did things the way that he did them. So first off, Kim Jones is a lifelong fan of Jordan brand and his favorite silhouette, like myself, is the Air Jordan 1. Which of course makes a lot of sense that when he was given the chance to collaborate with Jordan brand, he decided to choose the Air Jordan 1 silhouette. Not only is Kim Jones a big fan of the Air Jordan 1, but he's also a fan of the original Air Jordan 1 and wanted to make this Dior Air Jordan 1 as close to the original as possible. And that's why when you look at this Dior silhouette and compare it to newer Air Jordan 1s, the shape is different. However, if you look back at some of the original 1985 Jordan 1s, this shoe looks very similar. In fact, Kim Jones wanted this shoe to be so similar to the 1985 Jordan 1s that he made sure that the width of the stitching was exactly the same as the original because over the years, these stitching lines have actually gotten shorter. And the more that you hold this shoe and you look at it and you notice all the little details and you feel the leather, you realize how much more premium than a standard pair of Jordan 1s this shoe is. Is it $10,000 more premium? Maybe not, but there might be a case for the retail price of $2,000. Something else that you may not know about the Dior Air Jordan 1s, and one of the reasons why this shoe is so expensive and also so high quality, is because this shoe wasn't made at Jordan Brand's factories. Rather, this shoe was actually handmade in Italy by Dior, which explains so much of the attention to detail. Attention to detail that you would not get from a standard pair of Nike sneakers that are just pumped out at a factory. But diving into the sneaker, let's take a look at some of the materials that make up this incredibly premium Air Jordan 1. Starting off around the toe of the sneaker, you've got this really nice medium gray or Dior gray calf leather. In fact, almost the entire upper of this shoe is made up of super thick, super premium Dior calf leather. And as you might be able to tell from just looking at it, this leather is incredibly stiff, but that doesn't mean it's low quality. In fact, exactly the opposite. This leather is some of the best quality leather you can find on any shoe anywhere. You can tell by the super thick width of the leather and also by the feel and the smell of it. Not only that, this leather is not tumbled, it's actually incredibly smooth and it's also painted. In fact, they painted the edges of the leather as well. So the base leather on this shoe comes in this really nice off-white or very light cream color. Again, this leather is painted and it's actually a really nice shade of white. Accenting this white on the mud guard, on the eye stay, and around the heel of the sneaker, you've got this really nice Dior Gray, which is actually color matched to be exactly Dior Gray. When deciding the colorway for this collaboration, Kim Jones took a look at a lot of classic Air Jordan 1s, many of which are in his own personal collection, but he landed upon Dior Gray because this, of course, is their classic brand color way and when collaborating on a shoe as iconic as this you kind of got to give it your own flair and your own touch moving up on the sneaker on the edges of the eye stays you'll once again notice how thick of a cut of leather this is which just looks incredible on this shoe and gives it a much more premium and durable feel in fact if you've watched whistling diesel's channel at all you've probably seen his dior air jordan 1 review where he essentially wears this shoe through mud and dirt and really any sort of construction situation including driving over this shoe with an actual excavator um, this sneaker survived and actually once cleaned off looked almost brand new, it was crazy. And in my opinion, that's really just a testament to how durable really good leather actually is. Even if you're not a Whistling Diesel fan, it's actually a really great video to check out. I'll make sure to leave a link to it in the description below. As I mentioned earlier, weaving through the eyelets of this shoe, you've got these nice lightly waxed gray laces. And again, even though this gray doesn't exactly match the Dior gray on the rest of the sneaker, I just don't feel like switching out the laces. And I also think they provide a nice contrast against the white tongue. Speaking of the tongue, the tongue of the sneaker 
Breaker also comes in sort of an off-white cream color. And one detail I didn't notice until I got this shoe in hand is that you've actually got the Dior logo stitched and repeated into the tongue, which gives this shoe a little bit of extra interest, which I dig. At the top of the tongue, in addition to this really nice gray leather piping, you've also got the Dior Air logo on this gray patch at the top. Then moving inside the sneaker, you've got this really nice gray sock liner. It's still made of fabric. It's not a leather or something like that. And it actually feels like a standard Air Jordan 1 sock liner. Not that that's a bad thing. I actually prefer fabric on the sock liner of the shoe versus leathers. I feel like leathers get a little bit too hot and a little bit too sticky. If it's fabric, it just kind of feels like a standard pair of shoes, which I prefer. On the medial side of the sock liner, you've got the patch, which tells you which number of shoe that you have out of 8,500. Like I said, for the high top version of the shoe, you've got 8,500 pairs. On the low top version, I believe you have 4,700 pairs. And interestingly enough, even though there's less of the Air Jordan 1 low to yours, they're actually not worth as much. I think it's because the high top version of the silhouette is just more coveted, and that's the reason the price is more expensive for this shoe. The insole of this shoe comes in Dior gray leather with the Jumpman printed on the heel in white. Like I showed you earlier, you've got a second set of insoles if you decide to switch them out. Not sure exactly why you would, but you can if you need to. And also another cool detail on this shoe is that if you remove the insole on this sneaker, you'll notice on the strobe board of the shoe, you've got that repeated Dior logo. And actually one other detail is that if you look inside the shoe, you've also got this really nice shiny gray shoe tree, very similar to what you get on like the Christmas release Air Jordan 11s, except not so much anymore. They don't give you plastic ones anymore. They give you cardboard ones. So now this actually is a lot more premium. Continuing back in the shoe, you've got more of that incredibly premium feeling calf leather. It's just incredible to the touch. You really have to feel this shoe to experience how nice this leather actually is. On top of the midfoot on both the lateral and on the medial side of the shoe, you've got the now iconic oversized Dior Nike swoosh. This swoosh is made up of Dior fabric that features the repeated Dior logo. It's also edged by this really nice black embroidery. And like I mentioned earlier, it's enlarged. And the reason that they did that is to show off more of the Dior logos, which makes sense. I actually also really like the look of enlarged Nike swooshes. I don't know why that is, but they just seem more bold and more prominent. And I really dig that about it. Oh, actually, something else that I wanted to talk about is that all of the perforations on the toe of the sneaker and all of the lace eyelets are all punched out by hand. This shoe was made completely by hand. That's how a lot of handmade shoes are made. They literally get a little tiny hammer and they kind of hit this little sharp spike and punch out all these little holes. It's an incredibly time intensive process, but it creates a product that's so much more premium overall. And actually for my own signature shoe that I made with We Are Underdogs, it was the same sort of thing. It was the same process. They hand punched all the holes. It's crazy. In fact, I got to see it in the factory. It's nuts, but uh, it looks great. Then continuing back in the shoe, you've got more of that Dior gray, super thick and super premium calf leather. And then on the lateral side of the sneaker, you've got this really nice glossy white Air Dior logo that's pressed into the leather itself. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't love the Air Dior logo at first. I don't know why, I think I'm just used to the Air Jordan Wings logo. But seeing it now, it just really matches the shoe so much better and it really makes this collaboration feel more like a true collaboration than just a recolored Jordan 1. Then moving down on the sneaker, we get to some of the less premium feeling details and that is the seemingly standard Air Jordan 1 rubber midsole. Now based on what I've read, there isn't really anything different about this midsole versus a standard Air Jordan 1 midsole. Maybe the printing is slightly different and obviously it's hand stitched onto the shoe, but material wise, I think it's pretty much the same as a standard Air Jordan 1. Then finally moving to the bottom of the sneaker, you've got this really nice icy blue rubber outsole, which I know some people don't love, but let's be real, it looks really nice on the bottom with this gray and white sneaker, and it also allows you to see through to some of the logos underneath. On the right shoe, you've got the Dior logo printed in black underneath the rubber outsole sole, which looks super clean on this shoe. It's also becoming iconic. I've noticed tons of thumbnails that just show this and you know exactly what this sneaker is. And then on the left shoe, you've got the Air Dior logo in the same place. So overall, is the Dior Air Jordan 1 High worth it? For $10,000, in my opinion, absolutely not. Unless you are crazy wealthy and you want to wear this shoe, I guess on a regular basis or maybe to special events, I guess it doesn't really matter if you're crazy wealthy. You can buy stupid stuff for no reason because you have the money. For most people, this is not a sneaker worth grabbing. I only bought it because I I bought it for a video and uh, I figured I could get some content out of it. Other than that, I just don't see any real genuine purpose in having this sneaker unless you're a designer fiend or a Jordan collector. For the retail price of $2,000, if you were lucky enough to be able to grab a pair of these for $2,000, I think it is definitely an easier amount to stomach. It is still very expensive for a pair of shoes, but because of how high quality this leather is and how nicely it's made for two grand, if I had the opportunity to grab it, I might, because it's a really cool sneaker. It's an Air Jordan 1, my favorite silhouette. And again, it's incredibly premium. And actually, if you do have a pair of these or you're looking to grab a pair of these, I definitely recommend grabbing a couple pairs of Apothecary socks to go along with it. These socks are incredibly comfortable. It's my own sock brand. We designed these socks to be the best socks ever to go with your sneakers. And also, if you're buying a pair of Dior's, you can afford a couple pairs of socks, come on. But now I would love to know your thoughts on the Dior Air Jordan 1s and whether you'd pay retail for this shoe, whether you'd pay resale for this shoe, 
or whether you wouldn't even touch this shoe with a 10 foot pole. So make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.